Here we go. All right, we're going to get things started. Um, and we actually got a quorum. Matt Brockman just joined us. Okay. Thank you, Matt. All right, I see that we're recording now and um, we have a quorum. I am going to get things started. Um, the time is 1016. And I want to call the Municipal Accountability Review Board um, to order. It is December the 1st and um, we do have a quorum. Recording has started. I also want to make you aware that CTN is televising this meeting today. And the second item on the agenda today is the public comment period. At this time, anybody, um, any of our guests that wish to use this portion of the agenda for public comment has an opportunity to speak. Um, any members that wish to do so, please let uh, the chair know, myself, and um, I will ask that you state your name and the town that you reside in, as well as um, ask that you keep your comments uh, to two minutes as we have a full agenda and a little late start today. Does anybody wish to um, take an opportunity to speak during this public comment? If so, you'll have to take yourself off mute. I have muted everybody. I hear none. Then we then will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes. I am um, of November the 3rd, looking for a motion to approve those minutes. Tom Hamilton, I'll uh, move okay. to approve the minutes. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Bob. Any discussion? I do have one change, uh, Julian, that I would like to make for the record, and it is located on page three, um, paragraph six, um, line, the paragraph that starts with Miss Shaw asked the city to continue, and it would be um, the fifth line down, it states um, Secretary Rossi instead of Mayor Rossi, if you could. Um, note to make that change. Any other discussion? I hear none. Um, Julian, can we do a roll call vote, please? Mr. White. Aye. Mr. Hamilton. Aye. Mr. Felsigno. And uh, you may be on mute. Uh, we'll come back to you, Steve. Uh, Mr. Brockman. Aye. Oh, I heard Steve say Me aye too. there. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Shaw. Aye. And Ms. Kennison. Aye. And are there any other members of the board that have joined that I did not mention? Okay, the minutes have been approved with the noted change. Thank you. Let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the city of Hartford. Um, we have a subcommittee update that's included in your packet today. Uh, Julian, I'm gonna ask you to give uh, a brief update on what happened at the subcommittee. The Hartford subcommittee met on the 18th and we had a special guest who should be familiar to everybody on the board, Tom Hamilton, who's also the CFO of the Norwalk School System, gave a presentation on the Norwalk District's experience with reforming special ed programming there. Um, we had recognized and, and he had mentioned uh, previously uh, some sort of similar uh, experiences with regard to high um, identification 
of special needs students in the Norwalk district, which we've also seen in Hartford, high rates of outplacement for special ed services, uh, high, um, high rates of increase in, in special ed costs, and uh, the, the Norwalk school system had implemented a three year plan to to address these and, and a range of other issues that were highlighted in a in a consultants report. Uh, made significant investments in in special ed human resource. Uh, came up with a three year plan uh, that also in, entailed um, funding commitments from both the city council and the board of ed uh, and a plan for developing the in house capacity to provide certain special ed programming uh, in district as a way to um, both maintain you know high quality of services as well as you know manage costs so we received a comprehensive presentation from mr hamilton on the norwalk experience and discussed um, you know sort of things that the hartford district has been doing in a similar vein in, in developing some in-house programming there was a lot of discussion around the additional complication and challenge posed by the open choice system in Greater Hartford, and the superintendent did um, pose the need for legislative changes uh, to accompany any programmatic changes in order for the district to to um, come up with a, a, a long term plan for for um, you know, better managing the special ed costs and cost increases. Um, we put out an open call to the subcommittee members to submit any requests for additional information from the district, which we'll put into writing and, and uh, share with the district as soon as we have a complete list together. And uh, we also anticipate asking for suggestions for legislation, le legislative changes that, that would help in that area. I uh, gave a brief update on health insurance questions around uh, Board of Ed health insurance and the potential for transitioning to the partnership. We acknowledge that uh, we're going to need to um, engage with a uh, employee benefits or health benefits consultant to help with that. Uh, there do not appear to be any current consultants under state contract that we would be able to um, leverage or, or piggyback um, quickly so it, it looks as though we we're going to need to uh, put an RFP out or similar process for engaging with a consultant and then we also received our our routine monthly update from the budget director the CFO and budget director on the city's budget mitigation me measures um, she provided some highlights on some of the measures that have been put into place and um, some of the immediate impacts that's been um, recognized in terms of cost savings. And the next meeting of the subcommittee is currently scheduled for the 16th of this month. Thank you, Julian. So the next item on the agenda is for us to review the monthly reports from Hartford for um, the month of October. I will, um, those materials are included. I will ask uh, the city to provide us with an overview of their financials. Jennifer, or if the mayor is here. Good morning, this is Luke, can you hear me? Hi, Luke. Hi, good morning. Sorry, I'm, uh, I was unable to get on my computer. I'm on by phone. Um, so uh, I will uh, review the top lines and then happy to dig in wherever you like. The Bottom line is that we are uh, projecting end of year uh, net unfavorability of just shy of 2 million. Uh, however, that also represents a $1 million favorable improvement uh, in this period over the last period that we reported on. Um, the drivers of this are, are the following. Uh, on the uh, expense side, uh, we've uh, we've decreased the unfavorable payroll expense um, due to uh, attrition, and we actually think there's quite a lot of conservatism in our attrition numbers. Um, 
but we do continue to wrestle with some high overtime, particularly in uh, the fire department. We have a fire class coming in, which we'll resolve it later in the year, but that's an, an issue we're, we're working to uh, try to, uh, to stabilize. Um, the other big one, which we talked about last time, is uh, there is still a $1 million uh, negative variance in the water pipe, gas, and diesel fuel uh, Part of that is that our uh, prior diesel fuel contracts that we had expired in 2021 and the new contract is less favorable given prices. Uh, we could piggybacked on a state contract, which is uh, more favorable than we would have gotten uh, out in the market right now, but it's still uh, less favorable than our prior contract. And the water issue is we hope a one-time issue that's related to some faulty sensors and leaks at a couple of pools and strip flash pads from this past summer. So we are uh, doing an assessment of that and we'll uh, obviously work to, uh, to fix that uh, before the next season. On the revenue side, we've seen an increase uh, uh, in our current year property tax revenue by about a million. And uh, we've also seen some good favorability on conveyance uh, taxes um, and other fees. Um, that is, that's the quick summary, uh, but again, happy to go into more detail. I, one other thing I'd note is that our healthcare costs, uh, are currently about a million and a half higher than they were in FY21. Uh, that still leaves us with favorability that we're not booking in these projections, but we do want to note that, you know, the tra if that trend continues, it looks like we'll, we will not have quite as much uh, favorability from the healthcare line as we did in the par in the past two fiscal years, um, and I think that covers the big stuff. But I'm happy to, as I said, to dig in anywhere you like. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I do have a question as far as. I think I know that your format is to be very conservative as far as the payroll and the benefits side, because usually things flip and become very favorable yep. the closer we get to the end of the year. But at this moment, you're projecting out as if, you know, I understand that your overtime is running high, but you're projecting out, you know, $1.4 million greater than your budget, um, your overall budget. But I did hear you say like in the in the benefits side, you do have some, you are seeing some favorability due to the attrition side, but you're not um, actually putting that through in the numbers. That's right. We, we don't book the, the attrition until we've actually experienced it. So the rest of the attrition that we anticipate in this year, or, you know, if the current vacancies remain vacant, we'll have substantial attrition savings that we're not booking in this, in this current report. So at the yeah, end of the feel free to jump in on on any of this, uh, you know, if you if you want to add stuff to it. Sure, thanks, Mayor. The the one thing I would like to add is that so for the attrition, we record it as as it happens plus one month. So we assume that any non sworn position will be filled the following month. So as the mayor was mentioning, you know, we've pro we'll probably see a lot of favorability throughout the year, but our overtime is booked as projected through the whole year. So that is why it does flip towards the end of the year because the projections for overtime have been those projections for the full year, but that attrition hasn't been. So at the end of the day, does this board have to be worried that we're going to be seeing a $1.9 million shortage and that there's a budget gap that it, we need to worry about? I, I do not believe so. And what I would add for context is at, uh, and again, Jen, correct me if this is mistaken, but best of my recollection, at this time last year, we showed uh, an almost identical projection. And of course, we ended up with some significant um, surplus. Very good. I just want to make sure that it is um, the budgeting model that you use yep. and that when you're reporting out, even though it states that you're looking at a shortfall, it it, it is likely will change. Yeah, Jen, uh, did what I just is what I just said accurate? I want to make sure, 100% sure. <laughs> yes, 100% accurate. Okay. Um, we one of the reasons that we you know, use this model and try to be conservative is that we want to make sure that we are uh, being extra uh, careful to identify any red flags early, and so we don't want it to all be washed out by other numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to see that your um, revenue side is coming in greater than what was anticipated, so that that's a good sign. Um, I know that we have seen the benefits and the payroll um, flip the other way the closer we moved to the end of the year. Um, 
also the utilities, um, you know, is definitely much higher than your prior year experience versus um, your reporting that you're going to be short through the end of the year. So that compared to the prior year is about a $3.2 million increase um, over the actuals from the year before. Any questions from the board members on Hartford's financials? Uh, this is Mark. Sticking with the attrition, those are vacancies then. And uh, with each vacancy, I assume you budget health benefit. Uh, do you budget that at the family rate? Uh, I believe we budget it based on the actual number of individuals who are employed when we do the budget. So around March time, so we don't actually budget for a huge attrition amount. You know, we don't budget as though we have 1400 lives or 1400 employees, I believe. But I will um, I'll look into that a little bit more. I think we just get a report from Siegel and it's the same that they've done in the past. So I wasn't involved last year, but I can confirm that the next time we meet. OK, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I have a question. Um, on the uh, variance between the original adopted budget and the adjusted budget, um, my understanding is that because of the increase in pilot, uh, you know, you picked up a substantial amount of additional state aid, and, and then it looks like you put the bulk of that into pay as you go capital. Is that is that correct, number one? And then I guess to get back to Kim's earlier question in terms of having some um, um, confidence that you're going to end the year in a balanced situation. Is that capital, that pay as you go capital, um, sort of backloaded, if you will, toward the end of the year, or is it already all in process and committed? Um, um, you know, I'm just wondering if that provides some flexibility if it turns out you do need it, although I think certainly you're your history is you've been pretty conservative here and probably aren't going to, you know, need that extra flexibility. But I'm just wondering if that is sort of an additional source of budgetary flexibility. If you needed to scale back on some capital, could you do that to keep your budget in balance? Sure. Uh, so I think the answer is uh, I think the answer is yes and yes. Um, it is that you are right that uh, that 11 million went into our capital uh, reserve. Um, and yes, a lot of that capital expenditure is backloaded. That said, we hope to carry out all of that capital expenditure. We do not believe that we'll have to rely on any of that. Uh, but you know, if we saw come uh, you know the end of the first quarter of 2022, you know, or at the end of the third quarter of the fiscal year, uh, continued trends that were worrisome, we could. Uh, hold off on some of that capital and you know have a buffer to draw from but you know again based on our prior experience we do not believe that that will be necessary great thank you it's good to know that we have flex you have flexibility there any other questions I would also just note on, on that point, sorry to jump back in, but You're fine. Um, we we do we absolutely do not want to would not want to and do not think that we will need to do this, but we also have a substantial amount of flexibility because of the ARP funding with the revenue replacement uh, formula that they provide. We could always use some of that uh, to uh, to pay for operations if necessary, but again, that would be last resort and we do not think it will be necessary or even close. Okay. All right, thank you. I did have one question and I see that Philip Penn is on the line um, concerning the Board of Ed and the Board of Ed financials that are included. Um, it only includes the the expenditures and I'm wondering if in the future that we could actually get a true 
like profit and loss statement because as you can see in the Herford's budget, um, they are only going to provide 284 million towards your 472 million dollar adjusted budget therefore mm -hmm. there's a gap there so there's no way for this committee to understand how you're filling that gap and i'm assuming it's grants yeah grants is the biggest piece of it sure sure so is it possible that you could provide for our next uh set of reports um the revenue side that will then help close the expenditure gap yeah, I'm thinking if it's best to show you the actual revenue that we've pulled down from the grants or the total that we expect to receive, because once we get a, a grant award letter mm -hmm. from the state, as a for instance, all those funds are theoretically available to us for the year. Sure. But but the state gives us guidance to try to time those withdrawals as needed, mm -hmm. roughly 30 to 60 days out of when we anticipate the spend. So we'll, is there a preference on what you'd have us provide? Um, I would like to know how much the total award is, and then this way we know as you're spending it down um, how much is still left for um, the end of the year. I think that that would be helpful. Okay. Similar sure. to, to how you're, how those, not just a, a one for one, so that this way we would know how much is still left of the grant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Appreciate it. And now we can move on to the um, review and the discussion of the non-labor contracts and included is a summary of the contracts that was provided in your materials today. There is no approval that is needed on these non-labor contracts um, as that as the MARB is not required to approve them, but we'd like to ask the city to um, please give us an overview of the three non-labor contracts that you have um, provided today. Jen. Good afternoon or good morning again. Um, we have Assistant Chief Dan Riley on the line from the fire department to talk through the request for the pumper con the pumper trucks. Um, just high level on these. We're actually asking for uh, pre approval. I suppose we're trying to fund one in 2023 and one in 2024, but due to the lag time and actually producing these units, we're trying to lock in the price and then order them so that we can get them when we need them. Uh, we are I, we're, we are putting together kind of a five year VET projection um, this year. So those these are included in our projections as we're looking out in future years. So from my standpoint, that's where I see them, but I will let Assistant Chief give you more information on that. And then the other two are contracts for our DDS uh, neighborhood planning. And um, we have Mr. Randall Davis from uh, Department of Development Services to talk through those. So I will kick it over to um, Assistant Chief Riley. And just so you're aware, Jen, we um, will not take approval because these are non uh, labor contracts and this board does not approve, but we can give you feedback. Should we have any feedback and understand that you want to look forward in your planning for more than one year? Appreciate that. Thank you. Chief. Good, mo good morning. Uh, Chief Riley here. The uh, yeah, uh, Jen kind of summed it up. Uh, the reality is with all of the supply uh, delays uh, that the manufacturers are anticipating 18 to 20 months to build out these apparatus and the department is attempting to stay on pace with at least one apparatus per year uh, so we can we have an aging fleet and with that in mind uh, that's what this request is for simply to be proactive make sure we can get these things in place uh, as opposed to waiting and, and not having them when we need them I have to say I'm very impressed with your um, spreadsheet. I don't know that who provided this, if that comes right out of um, the fire department or if it comes out of the finance office, but I am quite happy to see this actually. This is a, a great tool that I think that Julian and I can definitely use for other towns. So um, appreciate the work that went into that and providing us with the actual aging of, of all the apparatus. And when you see that it becomes important that you have to uh, do the replacement. Thank you. All right, so the request today is for two pumper trucks. Um, and if anybody has any questions regarding the two pumper trucks, one of them to go into delivery for 2023, one for 2024. Um, as it was mentioned, it's an 18 month build time and the cost of each is five hundred and sixty four thousand dollars. 
Um, I do have a, a few questions. Um, and, yes, and thank you to the chief for making himself available. So the price, uh, the cost that is locked in, um, to what extent does that cost reflect um, kind of like the current inflationary environment? And I guess what I'm getting at is, is there any provision available to the city that if the price goes down 18 months from now, that perhaps there can be some savings? Like that would be a ceiling and not a, not a floor for the, for the cost of the second pumper truck. Uh, good question. Uh, I would I would anticipate that the price uh, won't go down. In fact, uh, we're seeing a 10 to 15 percent increase in just cost alone to keep these uh, for parts and, and keeping the apparatus that we currently have on the road. Um, mm -hmm. If it were to go down, I, I do believe there's some room there that we could uh, have some savings for sure. The manufacturers are very willing to work with us in that regards. So. I, and perhaps it's the optimist in me, but I, I heard some <laughs> really encouraging signs that some of the supply chain issues are starting to ease, just glimmers of hope on the horizon. And so if we're thinking out to, to 2024, just ensuring that there's some measure of flexibility, maybe, you know, maybe something for uh, discussion and consideration. And the second question I have, and it relates to just my you know, I, I don't know much about pumper trucks. Are these uh, built to spec or are they, are there like standard kind of um, features uh, for trucks that perform certain functions? Is it an off the shelf pumper truck, I guess I'm asking, or is it kind of customized to um, the order that the city has placed? No, it is, it is built to a certain spec. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, just a quick question. Maybe I missed it. Is how'd you arrive at um, Greenwood Emergency Vehicles as the vendor? Uh, yeah, we went through a normal um, RFP. Yeah, RFP process. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief? Philip, did you have a question or a comment? I, I did, Ashley. I apologize to go back to what we were discussing, but um, I, I want to make sure I captured correctly. Um, the city's budget, I think, for us is the same 284 million mm -hmm. that we have in our general fund budget. I just want to make sure we, we were looking at the right at the same thing. Yes, I have it, but your budget that was attached was 400. Oh, right. That's that's all funds. That includes, right, the... the. That's why I'm looking for the revenue side, because there's a gap. Okay. I, I, I misinterpreted what you said the first time. I thought we were talking about a gap on the general fund side. No. No. Okay. Fair enough. I, Thank I, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the um, other two contracts that you have in hand. Jennifer, who is going to present that? Yes, this is uh, Randall Davis. Randall. Good morning, everyone. My name is Randall Davis. I'm Good Deputy morning. Director of the uh, Department of Development Services. And within that department, we have six divisions of which planning is one of those divisions. And these are where these two contracts uh, were generated. Um, the, these contracts are for what we refer to as neighborhood plan development. The purpose of and the goal of the contract is for us to um, work at a very granular level with communities and residents um, to uh, help um, identify community priorities, build consensus around those priorities and around long term visioning. Um, and let me start by saying this is also um, Part of the purpose of this is to ensure that we are being efficient and uh, looking for productive growth. So one of the purposes of this is also to avoid redundancy um, in terms of how all of the neighborhoods develop their plans. And let me give you just a little bit of background so it makes hopefully a little bit more sense in context. Um, we have what is referred to as the um, plan of conservation and development, which as you know is required by all each town to develop every 10 years. Hartford uh, did its in 2020. That um, 
that project was overseen by our uh, uh, chair of the Planning and Zoning Commission. It involved lots of uh, professionals um, in specific areas, whether it was development or transportation, as well as community leaders as well. And that POCD, which was adopted in 2020, set the large framework of um, the direction that we want to go in as a city. I believe there um, are uh, 10 transformative areas that came out of that project. Um, so this project that we're doing here is just to supplant that and supplement it with a much more granular information from our neighborhoods. As you may know, uh, Hartford has 17 uh, historic geographic bounded neighborhoods, and we also have 13 um, neighborhood revitalization zones. So what we're doing and what this project is uh, intending to do over a five year period is to help those neighborhood result, the NRZs that refer to them, develop neighborhood plans that really get information directly from the residents and businesses there and help uh, fill out our plan of con con conservation and development. Um, we're intending to do this over a five year period. Um, and the first year we're intending to uh, develop plans with our consultants for uh, four specific neighborhoods. That is the Northeast, which some of you may know is the North End, where my parents grew up, Asylum Hill, Frog Hollow, and Upper Albany. Um, the goal is to have um, ultimately at the end kind of succinct action oriented neighborhood plan documents that'll help the neighborhoods and residents know how and where they can be involved to, um, to make sure that as we move forward on our POCD that it's done with everyone's voice being heard. Um, this is also being done in coordination with uh, LISC, which is the Local Initiatives Support uh, Coalition. LISC did some work in this area previously, and so as I mentioned earlier, our goal is not to be redundant. So we will, be, our consultants will be drawing from the work that's already been done as well. Um, we have two different contracts because uh, we did put this out for RFP. Uh, I didn't participate in the RFP process, so I didn't I didn't look this number up, but my recollection that it was at least um, nine submissions. It may have been a little bit less, but it was certainly over five. It was a lot of submissions. Um, and in the scope of work, uh, we, or I should say in our RFP, we anticipated that we might have more than one consultant depending on what their strengths and weaknesses were. Um, the director who was overseeing this couldn't be here today, which is why I'm here. And so when they did a review, they determined that uh, they would utilize two different contractors, uh, two different uh, two different uh, vendors. One is Fitzgerald Halliday, a local Hartford company that I personally worked with previously uh, when I was with the state, as well as um, KDH, which is the second, make sure I said that right, which is the second uh, the second vendor that we're utilizing for this project. They will each work on distinct uh, neighborhood areas, but it will all be done in coordination with our director so that we are not um, overlapping or um, being uh, being redundant. So I think that's it. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Randall. Um, one question, do you happen to know if, if um, this is part of the ARPA funds because I know that the mayor had mentioned previously about um, one time money going into the neighborhoods. So I, I might ask Jen if she would uh, weigh in here, but when we were going through our budget, I do not believe this is being, I do not believe we're using ARPA funds for this. We okay. are using, um, uh, our division gets a specific line item and this is one of the items that we were budgeted to do in this year. It's something we want to do for a while and um, we, everyone got their act together and submitted the request for this budget year. It's in the general fund, that's correct. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so do you envision that the two contractors will, um, each one will have a different book of business or they will do similar works and focus on a neighborhood or share amongst all three neighborhoods, but each one will have a different plan or a part of the plan that they're going to um, build? So my understanding um, from my brief conversation with the director who's managing this project is that they'll each be focusing on specific neighborhoods. I believe that there will be overlap and coordination to make sure that the, the benchmarks of, of, of information that we're getting, because a lot of us will be data collection um, as well, that will all be the same so that at the end of the day, the products are consistent. And as I mentioned, um, each neighborhood area may have 
uh, slightly different needs because the different um, NRZs have different strength levels, just like different towns have different capacities. It is the same with our um, neighborhood revitalization zones. Asylum Hill, for instance, um, I haven't been to personally one of their meetings in a while, but very strong, lots of community involvement, whereas um, some of the others may require a little bit more effort um, from the consultants. Okay. Any questions from the board members? I hear none. Then that closes out um, the non non labor contract uh, item of the agenda. And I just wanted to bring one item to the attention of the city, and it is a reminder that um, OPM Office of Intergovernmental is looking for some responses on unspent CRF funds, and that is due on Friday. And I know that um, Hartford has some unspent funds at this moment. Want to make sure that a response gets in um, to the intergovernmental office, Jennifer, so that this way, um, if you still have that need, that those funds do not get pulled back. Appreciate that. That will be done by Friday. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to the town of Sprague. And um, enclosed is the update from our subcommittee meeting and I will ask Julian to give us give the board an update on what occurred at the subcommittee for Sprague. Right the Sprague uh, committee also met on the 18th of November a brief meeting and we heard from the superintendent who provided a an overview of the school district's planned uses for uh, COVID um, ARPA funding and ESSER funding. They're receiving about $720,000 in total. And he uh, presented his um, three year spending plan and where those funds were going, which I included some of the highlights in the, the write up that was distributed. Uh, for selectman Cheryl Blanchard also uh, updated us on the town's planning for the use of ARPA funds. The town will receive about $846,000 and the Board of Finance will be spearheading the public input portion of that and it will be scheduling a public hearing uh, shortly. I don't believe it's been set yet. And the um, First Selectman's Office at this time has identified uh, IT infrastructure and cybersecurity uh, type improvements as among the top priorities, possibly also some street light. Uh, I don't know if they're upgrades or replacements at this point. Um, and we'll be looking for additional ideas from um, other boards and commissions and the general public. And then we also got a, a brief update on some of the um, initiatives underway in the finance office. So the development of uh, financial policies and procedures, which is um, has been a project for a while in response to some prior year audit findings, and those are projected to be completed by the end of the calendar year. And uh, an update on the audit schedule with the auditor expected to be on site beginning in January, uh, which of course will necessitate an extension to the audit deadline um, and that was the extent of our uh, November subcommittee meeting. We don't have a meeting with the Sprague subcommittee scheduled for no, uh, December and based on our proposed calendar for next year, we would not be meeting until February 24th unless uh, we have to schedule a special meeting um, if something arises before then. Thank you, Julian. All right, let's uh, I'm asking the um, city to the town to please uh, give us an update on your monthly budget report for selectmen. Good morning uh, on our budget. Uh, we're still year over year holding uh, steady. Uh, all of the invoices are still current, um, so we're staying up to date with that. Uh, the expenses and revenues both are, are in line. Um, and uh, we're anticipating that meeting uh, for just a 
touch back a little bit on what Julian was talking about, to be after the first of the year, um, after the holidays, for the meeting with the public on the ARPA funds. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has on the financials. At this moment, you're still showing that you're going to, um, did I say, was it a shortfall? Uh, any feedback on the on the FEMA money? Um, in, in reference to what part, Kim, I'm sorry. The, the roads? Oh, the roads. Uh, oh, nothing has come back yet. I gave them all okay. of the information. That was supposed to be a preliminary. Um, information, but we haven't heard anything back from that. So they, they have applied for a, a, a grant on roads for with for FEMA as um, during the hurricane, they had a road that got washed out and um, was not budgeted for to um, be able to have to uh, take care of such a catastrophe and um but it was it was necessary and but they're still projecting at the end of the year that you would then have a profit and if need be it would just take away from the profit margin that you were already projecting should anything um should fema not come forward correct that is that is correct because they, they haven't gotten back to us to just, uh they said they had to determine whether there was enough damage uh dollar wise in the county in order for for them to apply for federal funds for this area. So um, yes, if, if nothing else comes through uh, and there's no other place to use it, we'll take it away from the budgeted surplus. I do not have any other questions for you. Does any of the board members? I see and hear none. Um, then thank you, Sprague, for your update. Thank you. And have a happy holiday because we're not going to hear from you beforehand. Okay. And, a, and a happy new year. I should have said that to Hartford for those that are still on, but I think we're going to see them maybe next week or, the, excuse me, in, in a couple weeks. All right, next item on the agenda is the city of West Haven. And I can see the mayor is with us. First, I we had a subcommittee meeting, so I will ask Julian to update us on the um, materials that we've in, he's included for his a summary update um, from from that meeting. Right, the West Haven subcommittee met on the 16th, and we heard a, a brief update on the progress of the Cone Resnick audit at that point in time, which um, until then had uh, pretty much been a request for documentation from the city, which uh, the city had provided to the extent that they had it. Um, there was some question about whether or not there were uh, policies and procedures written um, or a comprehensive set of policies and procedures. Um, there was a suggestion that in the absence of of any written um, documentation for policies and procedures that the city begin to you know document current practices and provide that uh, and then we'll get a little bit more of an update further on in this agenda um, we did get a presentation from the city on their uh, updated plan for addressing all of the purchasing related requirements in the current memorandum of agreement. It touches on staffing, on uh, updating policies and procedures, um, incorporating those changes into the uh, MUNA system and to begin to deploy um, you know, consistent use of purchasing recs and purchase orders. Uh, in Munis and then roll out the training in Munis for for related staff and so on. So the city had put together a detailed plan for uh, working through that and um, 
among those um, among those steps is is a proposed increase in staffing of the purchasing function, which kind of rolls into uh, one of the other updates that the city provided, which was on sub, um, staffing of a variety of or a handful of positions. Um, the city is planning on proposing at the next city council meeting authorization for a purchasing director and uh, perhaps an additional uh, position for the finance office. Um, they also updated us on a accounts payable analyst position, which has been vacant for an extended period of time, but has now been filled with an internal candidate, which also creates a vacancy in the finance office that is, uh, I believe has been posted, but we can get an update on that. And um, we also got an update on uh, where the city stands with the use of, of planning for ARPA funds, which is essentially that um, the, the city is working on its public outreach plan at this point, intends to schedule a couple of public hearings, has posted a, a survey on its website, and from there uh, we should be uh, getting updates on uh, you know, planned uses of the funding itself. And that's the that's the extent of what we covered at that meeting. Thank you, Julian. Um, our next West Haven meeting uh, subcommittee is scheduled for the December the 14th. Um, I just want to add that in addition to this subcommittee um, meeting and the materials that Julian just provided you with um, as an update, the secretary has also sent a memo to West Haven that uh, to the mayor as that was dated and included in your packet on um, November the 15th as a reminder of um, materials that we have not received as of yet concerning the MOA while progress has been moving forward and we're starting to see some things on the plan um, to also make folks make the mayor aware of um, not meeting those requirements and the compliance pieces of it. Um, would then jeopardize the municipal restructuring funds. So um, the other item that I'm going to um, provide the members with is before I turn it over for um, West Haven to give us some updates is the I'm going to combine it with um, the next item of the agenda, which is the Cohen Resnick audit, and then I'll let I'll let the city fill fill in all the blanks. Um, Cone Resnick has continued to work with the city on, on the documentation that they have provided and they are actually on site this week and I was also told that Frank and um, the West Haven team has been cooperating and responding to the auditor's requests as they have come to them. So Frank, thank you and your team for doing that and um, being attentive to their requests. Um, following the on-site visit, uh, Cohen will be providing a timeline of deliverables um, to OPM, as well as giving us a, um, a timeline of when we could expect to see their deliverables to us in the report. I would just want to clarify something that was mentioned in the last meeting, and that was when I don't have a set date at this moment as when we can anticipate receiving their report. However, for West Haven, the contract, the contract part of it is our statement of work is through March 31st. However, we anticipate that we will receive that report sooner than that, not waiting until the March 31st deadline. So um, I would we will definitely be keeping this committee abreast of what is going on in the timeline as we are informed and um, we know that uh, Cohen is doing a, you know, systematic and um, they were hired to complete a specialized uh, forensic audit of West Haven and um, it is underway. So any comments from the city before we move forward on the items of the subcommittee or the audit, Frank or Mayor? You're both on mute. Good morning. Good morning. So, so uh, I spent uh, the day yesterday with representatives from Cohn Resnick. Um, we went through uh, all of the information that was uh, provided to them, as well as, uh, well, which was the backup to 
um, the data and costs submitted uh, to the state on the interim report. Uh, so uh, some questions, um, some requests for more detail. Um, I'm very pleased that the the audit is is basically exactly what I had anticipated and and told everyone uh, we were going to request from CLA as part of this uh, process. So um, you know all of the information that we had has been provided. Uh, as as we said at the subcommittee, there are gaps. There are no written policies and procedures that I could find. Um, so uh, we had a discussion with uh, Cone Resnick yesterday on that. They are coming back this afternoon uh, to follow up with some items and to speak with the mayor and myself. Um, I see that Mr. Toppy is on the call. I don't know if it would be proper for him to. I just want to say something. Okay. No. Um, I just wanted to, before we get to that, um, um, because we talked about the letter from um, Secretary McCaw, and I did um, uh, prepare a letter, and I sent it over to Secretary McCaw, yourself, Kim Kennison, uh, Michael Milone got a copy, Frank Chaplinsky, and our treasurer, Michael Last, um, outlining um, ways of taking care of the outstanding items that um, Secretary McCaw um, spoke about and timelines with that. So I hope that that answers most of it. And I even put that if there's anything that I did forget or whatever, please, if Julian would just send um, to me whatever it is. But we think that we covered pretty much everything as we do understand how important this is. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, that letter came in late this uh, late last night, and that's why it wasn't included. Um, we will then bring that forward to the subcommittee, and um, we'll, we definitely will... Um, let you know should we need to um, have any follow up on that. I can. I know that the process that you're going through was very thorough for the purchasing side. So we're hopeful that we will see that similar process when we look at the HR and um, the Munis training and those other items. Any questions from the board members? All right, then let's move on to the financials. And um, Mayor or Frank, could you please provide us with sure. your monthly update on your financials for October 21st? Those materials were um, provided multiple times. Um, yes. We had a little issue there, and uh, I don't know what caused that, but I will apologize to the board members for any confusion that this may have caused with the uh, monthly financials. Yes. Uh my apologies on that. That was uh, entirely my fault. Um, on Friday, uh, City Hall was closed. Rather than drive in, I, I worked on the files from home. And in the process of that, I lost the connection and the file got corrupted. So when I rebuilt it uh, and sent it out, uh, I didn't realize that the revenue piece was, was incorrect. Uh, so apologies for that. Um, the updated was sent. Uh, last night, you should have it. It is. It does have uh, revised on the top of every page. So if you're not looking at a file with revised on it, you're not looking at the right one. Uh, so again, apologies for that. Um, so for revenues, uh, the revenues you can see at a year-to-date basis, we are higher uh, to prior year. Uh, some of that is uh, due to the natural uh, increase in the tax base due to the higher mill rates. Uh, we did have a sale of property that was recorded this month. There were two, uh, uh, two pieces of land that were sold. Uh, the value uh, is uh, roughly half a million dollars on that. Um, I am intending to, uh, when I present to the City Council on uh, December 13th regarding the positions that we need to add in purchasing, uh, I am going to request that we use a portion of that uh, sale of property to fund those positions for this year since they weren't budgeted. Uh, the uh, impact of the property transfers, as you know, that uh, we had an increase in the fees related to property transfers that went into place this year. Uh, that has generated roughly $300,000. And uh, the increase in the pilot formula for the city 
resulted in roughly a half million and a half dollar uh, increase over what it was last year. So on an absolute basis, um, higher than last year, uh, revenue collections from the taxes are in line. Uh, we don't see any issues there. Uh, as far as a forecast on the revenues go, um, I'm actually holding the recording fees uh, at budget, even though uh, at the first four months, um, my timing algorithms would suggest that it's going to come in actually higher than that at year end. So as we move forward in the year, um, at the six month mark, I'll take another look at it and adjust, uh, adjust the year end projections uh, as needed for that. Uh, park and rec fees, you can see that we actually reduced that from uh, the budget, all of the summer programs. Uh, we did not actually charge the community for that. The city ended up uh, reimbursing uh, last year uh, any monies that we took in, and we have not uh, we have not charged for the summer programs for this year. Um, so I'm reflecting a reduction in that, and uh, you know minor movements in uh, the other line items within uh, within revenues. Uh, so no significant um, no significant issues there. We're projecting at this point to end up uh, probably 1.8 million in revenues higher than the budget. Uh, on the expenditure side, all of the lines are, are, are primarily in line with where we need to be. Public Works is uh, looks like it's starting to be a problem. Um, they've got some runaway overtime there, so I've started an analysis on that, so I can I can give that to the mayor and to the Public Works director, but. Um, if the timing is consistent with prior years, it would represent a significant overrun on their budget as far as overtime goes. Um, savings in other departments partially offset that, uh, that issue, uh, but not completely. Um, we are still projecting a surplus for the year of uh, roughly $1.7 million, and that, of course, is driven completely by the, by the pilot funds and the uh, sale of, of assets. Um, one thing that is not reflected in this forecast is there are no costs yet reflecting the additional two people uh, in the purchasing area that need to be uh, that will be uh, presented to the council and added. So I'm still pulling in all the costs related to that. Um, in the month five, I will have something in there and I can spike it out for you at that point. Um, but again, at this point, uh, we still are projecting a 1.6. I would say layering the, in the purchasing, it would probably come down to the uh, million and a half range uh, on an overall basis. Uh, that includes health care costs, et cetera. Uh, we're not seeing anything uh, spectacularly um, of issue on the sewer side. Uh, one thing that, uh, that you will note is uh, currently projecting a deficit in the sewer fund, and the entire reason for that is that uh, when we move to ADP, the FICA and the pension activity is being reported where the employees are. So in the past, we had kept that centrally. It's in, in the budget centrally within the general fund. So I am going to be working up an analysis on what I expect that total cost to be, there will be a uh, budget transfer of that cost out of the general fund into both Allentown and the sewer department so that uh, they do not run in deficit uh, due to a program that was put into place after the budget was, uh, was put together and approved. Um, so that will impact, of course, the general fund a little bit, but uh, not, uh, not substantially. Uh, Allentown, we are projecting a uh, favorable uh, result to the year, a surplus of roughly $800,000. And you can see that that is uh, being driven uh, by the additional uh, pilot monies as well that were allocated to Allentown that were not included in the budget. So uh, favorable on that side. Um, they are moving forward with the purchase of their, of their engine. Um, it is expected uh, to be in, uh, I believe, within 12 months, um, and I will double-check that just in case I'm, I'm misspeaking there, but I believe the engine has been ordered. Um, the anticipation for that is 
uh, as there was uh, a line item in the fiscal 21 budget related to capital that was not used, that was related to the truck, um, the city portion of that payment not covered by the FEMA grant received uh, will come from their fund balance. So it will not flow through their operating costs this year since it was recognized last year. Um, so that's the uh, update on the financials for the, for the city and uh, I welcome any questions. I have one question. Um, when you move the budget for the FICA uh, on the benefit lines, um, I'm assuming into each one of the perspective areas, I'm assuming that that impact will, should cover the shortfalls, no? It will. Okay. It will. Okay, very good. Um, I don't know whose hand went up first, so I apologize, Bob. I'll I'll reach to you first. Great, I'm sure my hand was up first. Um, okay. <laughs> you you told me that in your in your in your gestures. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, Frank, you're going to the council the day before the subcommittee meeting, and you're asking for uh, money for FY22 for the two purchasing positions. Is that correct? That's correct. I'll, I'll be presenting to them um, a proposal for a, a, a purchasing director, um, as well as uh, if we need to increase the current position that's there, that will be included. There is currently one position uh, that will become a buyer, um, but I'm also going to be requesting uh, an additional uh, junior accountant because the right. finance department is so understaffed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and will there be any other positions uh, in order to comply with the M uh, M uh, MOU that, um, MOA, I guess, that um, you will have to go back for? In other words, will you have to go back to the council for other positions? Uh, not in finance, as far as I know. No, anywhere, I mean, based on the uh, uh, MOA, uh, you know, all the, I'm having trouble keeping the charts of, you got HR, you got purchasing, you've got, you know, finance. I believe that um, the only position in HR that still needs to be filled is the HR generalist. They have posted for that and they're receiving uh, resumes in for that as we speak. And that's a budgeted position, so you don't need counsel. Is. That is correct. Okay. Okay. So to your um, point, I don't believe that there are any unbudgeted positions at this point that need to be filled. Okay, and the uh, so that for FY23, uh, you'll just include those positions in the budget and you won't have to go back to the council for any other um, adjustments. That is correct. Okay. And I have asked the um, other department heads where I've put together an appropriate request form so that each department head will submit to me for the fiscal 23 budget uh, any additional headcount that they feel is required along with uh, the annual cost, the duties of that person, and a brief justification as to why they need to be hired. Okay. Um, uh, do you uh, expect that there'll be any uh, issues before the council? Given past history, I, I suspect that there will be pushback, but I think that depending on how well the department heads put together their justifications, that will make that fight easier. Okay. I mean, uh, and I, I just uh, throw this out to, uh, uh, to, to the secretary that um, uh, I, I think that, you know, based on past experience with the council, who initially were slow on getting on board uh, with the efforts the, the city was uh, trying to make to, uh, based on MARB supervision, uh, that um, th they seem to have come around. But if there's any foot dragging, then I would suggest that some council members uh, be invited to a MARB meeting and explain uh, why there may be opposition to funding positions that uh, P 
people think are necessary to avoid the disaster that has occurred uh, and is uh, against uh, sound, uh, you know, practices. So, I mean, I, 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 you know, people view their their duties differently, and I, I just think that this aspect of it has to be there because if the mayor, you don't have to respond to this, but if the mayor and uh, the finance director are having trouble getting necessary positions filled, that's a problem for the MARB. I think, Mr. White, given the fact that the pilot formula has changed and that the revenues are increasing to West Haven, it would be a more difficult position for them to take to say that we cannot afford these positions anymore. Right. Okay. Point made. Thank you. Um, thank 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 you, um, Mr. White, and I do think that your comments were well appropriate, and um, I do uh, agree with your commentary um, that these positions are critical and have not, they've actually hurt the town of West Haven. Um, uh, Matt Brockman has, a, has his hand up as well. Mayor is, um, Bob, can you, I have to put your hand down. Um, Mayor, is your comment relative to what Mr. White had just said before I move on to the board member? Yes, uh, yes it is. Um, I just wanna say first off so that everybody is aware, we have three new council people that will be um, sworn in on Sunday. Um, that being said, I do believe um, the last meeting, the last few meetings that I was on that the council has become um, more receptive. I don't wanna speak for them. I mean, they understand. Um, you know, the, the um, necessity of these positions, I believe. And um, so I am very, very hopeful um, that when um, Frank uh, presents everything on the 13th, that um, everybody will um, vote in favor because these are best practices and it's something that we do need to take care of. And we can't just have a purchasing apartment with one person. And as I said, when I, when I first got in, it was one person that was doing half purchasing and half risk management. So that was really, you know, um, a stretch of the imagination, I'll put <laughs> as is for, for a better word. So I, I do um, believe that um, the council do, does understand. And of course, everybody's careful. I mean, we still don't have unlimited funds and we're nowhere near, you know, um, where we should be for a city our size, especially we're doing well with our general fund, better than when I was there or first got in. But that being said, we still have much work to do. So I do believe that I know I understand it. I know Frank understands it. And I do believe the city council members understand it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Matt. Yeah, um, question about the Allington um, Fire Department surplus there, Frank. Did you say that that 800,000 winds up going to help pay for the equipment cost or is that a real number no sir the uh, that's a real number the the equipment cost uh, is already in their fund balance as it was in last year's budget but never spent so where does the at the end of the year assuming that 800 is real where does that does that just go into their reserve or that, I that's correct. That, will, that will increase their fund balance is there any way to encourage them to sort of fund their pre-fund their pension a little bit better considering that we know Absolutely. we know that issue Yes, absolutely. That is on the table. Okay. I just think, you know, with an opportunity yeah. to have some extra cash, they presume both, all the fire districts have, uh, that may Correct. be an opportunity. Correct. There is, there is some additional contribution already in their budget, but as this additional money was not uh, budgeted for, I agree. My, my personal recommendation would be, as we had in the past, to take at least half of it and apply it to the unfunded pension. That'd Very good. Any other questions? One last thing, Ms. Kennison. Um, yes. You had mentioned ARPA in the beginning. Uh, there is a meeting next uh, Tuesday that I'll be attending uh, with the SCROG uh, related to ARPA. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll have uh, representatives there from uh, Congressman Delora's office. Uh, someone from CCM will be there to speak with us 
uh, as well as um, uh, the first selectman from East Windsor to talk about uh, their plan for ARPA fund usage, uh, the finance director from Westport to talk about their plan, as well as Fairfield um, to talk about uh, how they are planning to use the ARPA funds uh, to help the other communities kind of finalize and pull all this together. Very good. What's the date of that meeting? December Do you know? Second. Yeah, Thank December you. December 2nd. Oh, it's tomorrow. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not the second, the seventh. Seventh, okay. Um, Mayor, one other item I think would be appropriate at this time, as I'm aware, and um, it is a follow-up after the subcommittee, but it was posed at this meeting um, last month. I'm sorry, Mr. Hamilton, I did not see your hand up. Apology. Um, but I do think it is important for you to maybe update the committee on the work as we heard in the last meeting that departments were giving pushback to um, Frank on implementing the PO policies and procedures, but I have informed that you've had a meeting to discuss this. Could you please update the committee on your meeting? Yes, we did have a meeting. Actually, it was the day before Thanksgiving, November the 24th. I want to say it lasted pretty close to an hour, but not quite an hour. I had all department heads there. One couldn't make it for, uh, but I, I've since spoken with him. Um, Everything was laid out before um, all the department heads. I do believe right now that they understand the importance of this and doing best practices, and that um, I explained that this will not be optional, this is mandatory, and that I don't want to have to discipline someone, but if they will not comply, I would have no choice to do such. Um, that's not what we're looking to do. We're looking to move West Haven into the right century, I keep <laughs> putting it, and doing best practices and the right thing. So um, I did not receive any type of pushback on, um, on the meeting, um, and time will tell. But um, as, as everyone is aware now, this is extremely important needs to be done immediately and we're going to need everyone's cooperation not just 50 percent or, or or 70 percent 100 percent cooperation to get this process in place and to keep it working thank you um mr hamilton yeah thanks i wanted to go back to the issue of purchasing staffing and yes. uh, you know of course i completely support uh, mr white's comments um one of the things I know we had talked about, I don't remember whether it was at the last board meeting or whether it was a subcommittee meeting, was the you know necessary and appropriate staffing and purchasing. And, and if I recall correctly, um, with the addition, you were going to have a two-person person, two person purchasing department, but we had talked about whether or not really three was a more appropriate number. And it occurs to me that given the, you know, the crisis, uh, the situation that's that's happened, uh, combined with the fact that you have additional resources from the pilot that would allow you to add a third purchasing position, unless I missed it, I think you're still going to have a two-person department. And I'm what I'm kind of pushing back on is what better time than now to put in place the real full staffing that you need in, in this area. And so I'm wondering, should you go back and and uh, ask not for funding for one position, but ask for funding for two positions from the council? No, that's a great point. That's a great point. The, the analysis that I've done on other towns is that, um, you know, a number of towns our size do actually have three, uh, three or four uh, in their purchasing department. So, um, you're right. I, I can I can put together a, a, an additional request for an additional buyer. I, I would I would agree to that um, and and think that that would be prudent to do that. Um, I can tell you when I worked in higher education with a 284 million dollar budget and yours is larger than that. Um, I had a director and two buyers, and that you know they end up paying for themselves because they're able to get, you know, um, maximize and get some cost savings. And definitely you're going to need another person. Maybe it's not a buyer who's going to be doing the contractual side of life, you know, you know as you start to get into 
contracts, because I don't think that you're heavily into contracts, but I'm not sure if that's coming out of legal or not. It is coming out of legal. Okay. Um, Tom, did you have another question while we're here? No, that, that was really it. I just want to kind okay. of urge uh, uh, West Haven to, you know, use the the crisis and the opportunity to staff the finance department as it needs to be staffed. And, uh, I, you know, I think there's an opportunity here, particularly with the fact that you've got the money with the pilot to, to do what needs to be done. And I, I really urge you to do that. Understood. Christine. Thank you. Um, I just uh, want to get back to Frank's report of the anticipated um, uh, revenues uh, and projected surplus uh, for the current year. Uh, just to be clear, does that does that take into account the restructuring funds uh, that are currently kind of pending the four million dollars in, in restructuring, or is it no, separate in a prior year? Yeah, the one point eight. Uh, is currently is, is strictly fiscal 22. So okay. there are no restricted funds in those numbers. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, I have one other comment to make, and that is um, to remind West Haven that there is a report in feedback that is due to our intergovernmental department at OPM and to respond about your unspent CRF funding, and that is due on Friday, as uh, I think every dollar is necessary. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Yes, I, I received the note from uh, from Martin. Uh, I'm planning on taking care of that today. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Christine, your hand is up still, or is that a new one? No. Okay. Thank you. Then I guess we'll move on to other business um, in the agenda and included in your packet is a list of dates um, that would be the calendar for the new year. And wanted to share that calendar with the members and see if there are any questions. And I'm looking for approval for the FY22 um, calendar, if I could get a motion. No move, Bob White. Thank you, Bob. How about a second? Uh, second, Tom Hamilton. Thank you, Tom. Any other discussion? I hear none. Can I get a roll call of uh, the vote, please? Julian. Sure. Uh, Mr. White. Yes. Mr. Waxenberg. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mr. Felsigno. Yes. Mr. Brockman. Yes. Ms. Shaw. Oh, yes. you're on mute. <laughs> and Ms. Kennison. Yes. And are there any board members I didn't mention that are on the call? OK, that's everybody. All right, thank you. The calendar has been approved for 2022. And the next item on the agenda um, is discussion around our subcommittee panel. And as it exists today, this is the one time a year that we decided that we would take the opportunity should anybody want to make any changes within subcommittee um, and otherwise it stays as it is. Any discussion? I see none. Can we get a 
motion to approve the subcommittee as it is and everybody moves forward with their existing um, subcommittees that they're on. Um, before we do that, um, um, Ms. Johnson, the um, you want to switch? Did did people know that they had to respond to that? Um, I just saw it. I didn't know if it was just for information or okay. or or what. That would be my only question. If someone wanted that, maybe isn't here, wanted to make a change, but uh, I'm fine with it as it is. But it's up to you. Um, I think that people are aware this is the practice that we do um, every year. However, if you wanted to postpone it till next um, meeting, we could do that. But um, I think that the only question I would have is, is if folks are having trouble um, attending a meeting and it, it falls on a, on a bad day and they're not able to make those meetings. Um, and some of those folks aren't here today. So. <laughs> I'll defer to you. I'm going to look for a motion to see if we can get this approved. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Second. Second, please. Thank you, Tom. Any discussion? I hear none. Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Waxenberg? Yes. Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Mr. Felsigno? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Brockman? Yes. Ms. Shaw? Yes. And Ms. Kennison? Yes. And are there any board members I missed? And then that's everybody. All right, thank you. Um, then the subcommittees are ready to go forward as they stand for the next calendar year. Um, thank you, everyone. And I have nothing else um, on the agenda. Um, if anybody has anything else that they need to add. Oh, Matt, is your hand up? Hey, yeah, can I just ask one uh, question, favor? Sure. Uh, is it possible to get um, any of the CRF reports that you're mentioning that our three towns are submitting and I know we talked, I think, last time about the ARPA reports, just to make sure that we all see everything that the, our three towns are submitting to OPM to other divisions. I just want to make sure we're seeing it too, so that we can have all the reports in our heads. Um, sure. Two of the towns are required to report on the CRF. Um, I don't think Sprague is because it didn't fall into that category, unless I'm mixing up the CRF with the ARPA. Julian. I. It's all I think three I should report. Yeah, all three should report on the CRF, and then Very good. there are different requirements for the ARPA. Sure, and um, the the request that is in is for them to actually um, just make a response if they plan to use up the funding that's been allotted to them, Matt. And oh. so it, their report is not due till after December 31st, so it will happen in January at the end of the year. We've asked for initial information that had to be provided in the portal just so that we can then um, gauge where the funds have been spent or not um, amongst all municipalities. But the yeah. final reports aren't really due until January. Okay. Okay. Thanks. But we will ask for that. All right, any other comments, questions? Can I get a motion to adjourn then? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> How about a How second? Was that quick enough? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are so funny. <laughs> Faster than the unmute button, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm getting used to it takes me all day to figure out how to use Christine. Is that a second? <laughs> it is. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed speak now. I hear none. So therefore we are adjourned. Thank you all. Wish you a happy holidays. You. If we don't see you beforehand and um, be safe. <laughs>